People who made an impulse decision when they found out Hawaii was going to be nuked. What did you do and do you regret it? Currently in Kailua on the island of Oahu. When my wife and I got the message, we were in bed. She asked me to make scrambled eggs with sausage, toast, and avocado. So I went downstairs and made breakfast as fast and best I could. Gave my pup some too cause he is going to dine like a king if it's really his last meal. After the false alarm, we made an appointment at an ultrasound office to see our unborn daughter. Life is precious. Your pup must have wondered how we was such an extra good boy that day. I started off trying to wake up my roommates to no avail. Then, in extreme denial, I walked outside my home to see if everyone else was hysterically preparing for a disaster. There were crowds of people running to their cars from the beach, the freeway was completely blocked, and yet there were also elderly people who didn't get a notification just watering their lawn as if nothing was happening. After the 5 minute outside which felt like an hour I walked back in to see my roommates awake switching through channels and seeing a banner on every channel that warned us to seek shelter, stay to the floor, and away from windows. Then I received a frantic call from my mom from California in tears saying how much he loved me then calling my dad and two sisters saying it could be the last time they might talk to me. My sister, 12, felt so rushed and said she loved me but didn't know what else to say. I could hear my other sister, 6, say how could Ryan be dying? There's no way at this point my biggest fear was no longer dying. It was the thought of my family I'm leaving behind. I told them how I live in an area with low population and away from military bases and I should be fine with my water and food reserves. Mid call I receive an incoming call from my uncle who lives on island. I figured he had important news that was relevant so I told my family I had to hang up. He told me it was a false alarm. I proceeded to tell everyone else. And that concluded my most stressful 30 minutes ever. That 6 year old is about to have a breakdown. My best friend is vacationing there. She crawled into bed with her 3 and 5 year old daughters and held them while accepting that they were going to die. Her husband called from a fishing boat trip to say he loved them and wished he was with them. This broke my heart. My grandma told us she bought MREs on Amazon when she got the alert. We had to actually explain to her how that wouldn't have helped. Oh Amazon would have delivered that no prob. They are very dedicated. When I heard about it my 12 year old daughter called from shelter at a basketball game she was cheering for. Neither my wife and I received any cell notification so we looked at each other and decided that by this point if something is coming we don't have time to seek shelter so just hope for the best and let the other kids sleep. I have a co-worker that ran red lights taking his family to a hospital basement for shelter where a woman was forced to give birth. 100% don't regret my approach to this. Personally, I uh, I slept through it. I woke up to the second lol NVM alert. Though my dad was down at the beach taking pictures, and he told me later that he fully intended to just stay there and hang out. My mum had thought her phone had a virus so she didn't do anything. 807. Ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. 845. Lol NVM. Hawaii resident here. While I didn't make the impulse decision, the people around me did. I was sleeping when the announcement came out, and the others in my house didn't decide to wake me up. They said if I was gonna die, might as well let me die in my sleep. Edit. We all became tired of the news after 2 hours. Just became annoying. <laughs> Cleared out the fridge and hid in it for 6 hours. Got the alert with 2% battery, so had no idea it was fake. Went to Hinoko Hot to dive. Figured 100 featuring underwater was as good a place as any. No boom. My dad lives in Modoka. Pop of 8000 or so. I called him when I heard about it. Asked him about it. He said 1. He didn't think it was real anyway. 2. A nuke from NK would be small and aimed at one of the population centers. Oahu. Maui. Big Island. And would not kill him. And 3. If 1. And 2. Were wrong. He couldn't do much to stop it. He just had breakfast on the lanai like usual. He just had breakfast on the lanai like usual. This is why I want to move to Hawaii. I ate all the leftover lasagna in my fridge. I figured that if shoot's about to hit the fan, I better carb TF up. BTW, living on Big Island. Most rational response yet. Leave no carbs behind. 
I texted my mother I need to tell you I love you. In case everything goes wrong please, please tell everyone I love them and I've had a wonderful life. I'm very happy. She called me in a panic and I told her I loved her. She asked me if I was going to leave and I told her I was going to stay with my husband no matter what. I ended the call because I didn't want her to hear me die if it did happen. Then I kissed my husband and we held each other on the couch. It was a good day. That's beautiful. Reminds me of the beach scene in Deep Impact. Calm. Loving embrace before death. Except you lived. Congratulations. My wife and I had just sat down to eat at Cafe 100 in Hilo on the big island when we all got the alert. I don't know if it's because we're both first responders or what, but we just continued eating while trying to check the internet to see if it was real. I know it said not a drill but it was just so. I dunno surreal? The owner sent his employees home and sat with us. I remember thinking that this is an island. There's no place to go. And I already paid for this meal damn it. I got on the emergency services scanner for the island and heard someone confirm it wasn't real. About 15 minutes before the actual alert went to everyone. So that was good. I'm just pee that the first place a government went to to confirm it was false was freaking Twitter. We had next to no internet connection because everyone was jamming the signal. And Twitter is terrible anyway. And why not send an all clear on the phones ASAP? The owner sent his employees home and sat with us. Now my heart's broken. That poor guy maybe had no one to be with. No wife. No kids. No family. No friends. So he sat down with you guys to not die alone. It was 8.07am I was sitting in my hotel room in Waikiki browsing Reddit. Saw the alert and immediately turned on the news and started going to Twitter. I didn't hear any sirens. No news. It was eerie enough to question I went outside my door saw people yelling and people calling loved ones. I was glad I stayed calm but hotel staff was running out of the building the lobby was a crap show for about 20 minutes. From my point of view the locals seemed scared it was their home and livelihood. I was on an island 2395 miles away from home so if I was gonna die at least there was nice weather. My friend who goes to college on the island said campus was an absolute crap show. All I regret is filling my emergency water containers right behind the car. So now I'm blocked in the garage by 150 gallons of water. I can't stop laughing at this. Sorry man. But this is awesome. That's an awkward call to work come Monday morning. I felt like this alert showed me that I can keep calm and that I'm a bit apathetic towards death. And I'm pretty proud of myself. I realized the same thing when that stupid rocket launch happened in California. I was walking out of work and I saw the object flying in the sky and I was just like well nothing I can realistically do. Might as well enjoy some fresh air while I can. I got drunk for the first time in 4 years of sobriety. Oops. I kinda assumed at least a few people would relapse with this news. It's understandable. I hope you talked it out with your support people and this didn't sidetrack your hard won sobriety. I made an impulse decision to stay in bed with my wife. Nowhere to go for safety. No time to get there anyway. Might as well be comfortable in my bed with someone I love. My 70 year old dad ate two loaves of bread while hiding in his closet. He said he only regrets it because he has to buy more bread now. That is the most dad thing to do. I'll be damned if this bread is going to waste. Well, I don't live in Hawaii, but as someone who's planned for some of this stuff, I'd caution against just resigning yourself to die. Depending on a lot of different factors, you could easily survive. A woman survived Hiroshima 300 meters from the hippocenter of the blast because she was in a sturdy building. The man sitting on the steps outside became a shadow on the pavement. The typical yield you can expect to hit a countervalue target like a city is below 1 megaton. Probably closer to the range of 150 to 300 kilotons. If you don't live downtown, the likely center of target, and are at least 2 miles from the hippocenter, then you stand at least a 50% chance of surviving, which goes up exponentially if you take even basic steps to survive, like hiding in a windowless room. There are so many different factors to consider. Is the weapon set for ground detonation or air burst? If air burst, what altitude? What direction is the wind blowing? Fission versus fusion ratio, local geography, and proximity, and so many others. Point is, don't give up, you can make it. 
I regret not calling my parents. I was in total denial mode and only called my fiancé to ask if he got the alert too. He was working at Honolulu airport, where the scene was more chaotic. He didn't think he'd ever see me again. Edit. Including details on how the airports were. All the flights were grounded. He was at HNL at the time and passengers started walking off the aircraft. The captain eventually deplaned everyone. Security and Tsar were as clueless as everyone. And couldn't direct anyone to shelter because there really isn't one. Some people ran out the terminal. Presumably to get to their cars and drive home. I was at Hilo airport at the time. It was pretty calm. But some tourists were huddled together. Praying and or crying. We managed to get our car before all the rental stands closed up. He also said at Kona. Tsar allowed all passengers through to seek shelter inside. Not sure where though because it's open air. When the all clear came through, all passengers had to exit and be ray screened, causing massive flight delays. I was in the living room changing my two month old son's diaper. My wife was in the bedroom sleeping in. I hear the alarm go off on my phone a couple feet away and just think oh it's just one of those amber alerts and go back to changing his diaper. A second later my wife comes running out of the bedroom screaming that we were going to die. I kind of froze up. All I could think was how helpless I felt and how I couldn't do anything to save my newborn son. My wife was running around the house grabbing diapers and formula for the baby and I was just slowly finishing changing his diaper because I just couldn't imagine that something like this could happen. After about 2-3 minutes I sort of snapped back to reality and focused only on getting my son and wife to some sort of safety. I live in a relatively small beach house with very thin walls so I knew it wouldn't do anything but I told my wife we would be safest in the bathroom in the middle of our house. It really wasn't an impulse decision but throughout the whole thing I didn't think to even call or text any of my family on the mainland. If you had asked me what I would do if put in this situation I would say I would call my parents and tell them I love them but I didn't even think of that. I just thought about how much I love my wife and son and how sad I was that I wouldn't be able to see who he would become when he grows up. This has really given me a completely different perspective on life and makes me sad that I didn't even think to say goodbye to my family back home. TL. DR. I didn't think to call anyone back home and could only think about my wife and newborn son. Well, think of this as an opportunity now to love your son every day so that you can enjoy seeing the kind of man he'll be when he grows up. It's a privilege denied to many, after all. In the chaos of figuring out where to seek shelter, we ended up deciding to go to the hospital that my wife works at, she's a nurse, figuring we could maybe help out with the flood of people that would be coming to the hospital with injuries. We have about 20 minutes from the time an alert is received until the missile hits. We were up against that limit when I pulled into a parking spot I found on the street. My wife grabbed my son and ran for the hospital. I grabbed some change and started paying the parking meter. My wife turned back and yelled what are you doing? I yelled back we have to pay the meter, even if the world is going to end. We're not savages. We didn't get a parking ticket, so no regrets. I was in a hostel and I'm a male and all of the other people in the hostel room I was in were women the same age as me. We all got the text at once and looked at each other. I knew what I had to do. Awkwardly comfort them with jokes while they cried. Not very romantic. The hero they needed. Edit. I mean that is a very good thing. Mad respect. Had an impulse panic attack. 195 stroke 100 wouldn't recommend. Comma 195 stroke 100. This is so freaking funny and I relate wholeheartedly. I'm stationed in Hawaii. Woke up to the message. Audibly said frick. I grabbed my med bag and got out of my room to see if anyone on duty knew what was going on. Saw everyone on barracks duty was knocking on the doors and directing people to the battalion aid station which is one of the designated bomb shelters. I knew the doors were locked and I was the only one who knew the code who was there so I unlocked them and opened it for everyone to get inside. Once inside more and more people came in. Compared to the rest of the island it was pretty calm. Civilians and people from other units were just sitting on the floor chatting. I called up my mom and sister and told them what was happening and if anything happens to know that I signed up for this and that I love them. As I walked through trying to prep everything for the impending missile I accepted I was probably going to die, but I would make an effort to survive. Eventually somebody came by and told us it was a false alarm. Then I went kayaking. No ragrats. 
I was at a laundromat and my wife called me all panicked after receiving alert on her iPhone. I told her that it was probably a mistake because I didn't receive it on my Samsung phone and it must be a technical glitch or something. Also it seemed like there should have been sirens, emergency news broadcasts, and a full on national military notice rather than just a notice to iOS users. In hindsight I was right and seemed like Joe Cool, but I now feel like I should have reacted more and taken it seriously. I don't want the last moments of my life to be me saying it's probably nothing. I was a dismissive butthole to my wife who was genuinely effing terrified and I regret that. I was at work here on Maui. My wife was at home with the kids and I called them to calm them down. Once I realized they were all together I went to the third floor of a building with some co-workers and waited for the big bang or whatever was to come. I told my big Samoan boss that we should just hug. This way they would find us frozen in time like the folks they found in Pompeii after Mount Vesuvius. Things were a little awkward the rest of the day. Rolled out of bed and told my boyfriend well. How about I make us one last cup of coffee before we die then proceeded to the kitchen to brew a small pot. All I wanted was one last time to do one of my favorite things. Sit and talk stories with him with coffee and cigarettes in the morning. Maybe it wasn't so impulsive, but there was something about it being the last time to ever do that. I hope I have that level of calm if that were to happen to me. My uncle and his family live in Hawaii. He's been cheating on his wife for two years. We all found out about it in a mass text he sent five minutes after the emergency text went out. He to wanted clear the air before he died. That's so freaking crappy though. Imagine how his wife and kids felt finding out, and in that moment thinking those feelings would be the last they ever felt. Like if anything, they deserve being happy in the last moments and not betrayed angry upset. My first thought was of the excellent surfing with my 10 year old the day before. Enjoyed some great paragliding too. I'm on the island of Hawaii. Normally, we're not even up or down wind of Oahu. So, I went back to sleep. When I woke up, we were all sharing funny pictures. Only sorry didn't have a girlfriend nearby. What a great close, yeah. I asked my friend, and he said he got the alarm as he was driving for a surf. He said he just kept driving, and missed false alarm text. Said if he was gonna die, he'd do it surfing. Eventually someone paddled out, and informed everyone it was a false alarm. Late to respond here, but I'll throw mine in. I work at a huge tourist location on Oahu. Pretty quickly after the alert went out, we started herding all of our guests into large buses and moving them to a huge World War II bunker we have on property. In the middle of directing guests on where to go I realized I hadn't clocked in yet, and decided that if I was going to die in a thermonuclear detonation, I might as well be getting paid for it. I clocked in, then hopped a small bus with a few of my friend's workmates and headed toward the bunker. Once we got there, we decided that we really didn't want to die in concrete caves surrounded by people we really didn't like, so we just kept driving to the other side of the property and hung out in the back of a big butt valley for a few hours. So, I guess the impulsive thing I did was purposely avoid shelter and instead go somewhere beautiful. Quick, head to the bunker. Eh, Dave isn't there. He's in butthole. Okay let's go to an open valley and die instead. I said frick it, and relapsed. I just laid in bed and told my gf I loved her because there wasn't much else to do. I called my parents and left them a voicemail and told them I loved them too. I told my gf not to worry about it and go back to sleep. Her mom called her not even a minute later crying telling her to wake up and that she was rushing home now. She thought I wasn't scared but if it were real we wouldn't be able to do anything about it so I just wanted her to be in my arms for our last moments. I live pretty close to town center so for me I looked at my girlfriend and said I love you and I hope it's fast. Sat in bed with her looking at pictures of our trip we took to big island and just was with her. The weirdest part is basically just living today. Yesterday I fully accepted I was gonna die so it's weird for having to just live with the idea that I didn't. When you accept you're going to die, you start really living. Keep being awesome, though. I swallowed a bunch of popcorn seeds lol. I thought it would be hella funny if people found a bunch of popcorn around my burnt butt body. 
I came out on social media. I don't completely regret it, but I have definitely lost some friends, and a lot of my relationships with my friends have become really awkward. If you being gay is enough to lose friends then they were not good friends in the first place. I hope they come round, or you find better friends. I'm happy you can be your true self now though. Enjoy it, and congratulations on this milestone. Luckily the only bomb that dropped that morning was in my bathroom, and it too took 40 minutes to clear. On a more serious note, I realized only last night that I kept my sanity intact due to dumb luck. For me it was because I took the kids out late the night before, and we were all home, all together. After digesting the stories of my friends and family, I realized that if my children had been at school, or away with their mom, or if we had been driving in the middle of Maui somewhere, I'm pretty sure I would have absolutely lost my crap. I woke my two young girls and told them we were making a fort in my walk-in closet, the only room with no windows. From there it was a surreal 10 minutes where I grabbed everything I could think of that would be helpful. Water, juice, granola bars, blankets, shoes, broken glass, tablets for the kids, entertainment. At one point I mentally decided I needed to stop gathering items from rooms with glass windows and retreat into the closet. At that point I just put on my game face with the girls and furiously tried to find out what I could with my phone. I exchanged a few texts with loved ones and took a call from my ex, making sure I had heard. I realize now that I was spared a lot of mental trauma because I had my family with me. I was doing the best I could for them. And basically, I didn't have to make a lot of hard decisions. I read a lot about the anguish of separated family, about those at soccer games, shopping at farmers markets, and those who had no idea what to do with those who they needed to protect, and those who they wanted to but couldn't contact. I'm glad my girls and I were spared the visuals of the panic. Later I went to a sunset party which had a newfound vigor as friends embraced each other a bit harder and half joked, I'm glad you are alive. I was in my living room sitting next to my husband and sleeping two month old. Saw the alert on my phone. We grabbed the baby and his pacifier and went and sat in the bathroom. I started calling people who work on base to see if they knew anything. My husband was checking Twitter. Saw something about it being fake. Went back out to the living room to check the local news. Saw the alert there. Went back to the bathroom. The siren started going off and I sat there holding my two month old baby crying thinking we were going to die and I had no way to protect him. Got the false alarm message and husband took the baby back out to the living room while I cried for a little while longer in the bathroom. So no major impulse decision. Just a what the frick do I do and call the best option I can think of in this moment is to sit in the fricking bathroom. The siren started going off and I sat there holding my two month old baby crying thinking we were going to die and I had no way to protect him. The fricking sirens. That crap probably made it real for a lot of people. When I was a kid, I wasn't afraid of tornadoes until the air raid sirens actually went off. Then I was convinced crap was real. I think the good answers will be in a few years, when the ones who actually made life altering decisions will leave their bunkers. Blast from the past too, Maui Waui. I bet there's at least a couple of survivalists who went into their bunkers, and won't come up for 40 years. They'd have radios in there, they are crazy, but they ain't stupid. I woke up to people calling me about the alert, looked at my phone and read the message. I started searching the internet for answers, and there was zero coverage, which made me even more scared because I thought it was some kind of government conspiracy to not let the rest of the world know what was happening. I go to the Hawaii subreddit and everyone is saying they got the alert, but no info on whether the threat is real. Thinking about my life I started to feel content with my inevitable death. Then I imagined my last moments slowly burning an intense pain. That thought was followed by a minor anxiety attack and involuntary shaking for the next 30 minutes. I was hiding out at home with my best friend. Decided to hold her hand and tell her I had feelings for her. Considering we were going to die and all, she didn't feel the same way. It's awkward now and I'm worried for my friendship with her now. Imagine if there was an actual emergency in Hawaii in the near future. Public trust has got to be at a minimum. I don't think so. People know these things are serious. The odds of two frick ups related to an emergency broadcast system are low. Plus they'd probably add this is not a mistake broadcast. 
we made lots of jokes at work last night that a lot for children will probably be born in 9 months. Baby boomers law. Hurricane Niki produced the largest graduating class in my high school's history, but it had 6 months of no electricity. I don't know if this will even be a blip. You have been visited by the party pug he just wants you to celebrate with him. Comment woohoo to celebrate with the party pug. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.